What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. And as you can tell, we're a long way from the farm. I told you guys in the last video, we were going on vacation. I couldn't tell you guys where just yet, but uh, kind of let you guys look around to see if you can kind of guess where we're at. We got Rachel, Kaya, and Caleb's behind me back here. Uh, we just got here last night at uh, about 11 o'clock. It was a long day's trip. Um, so if you can't tell, we are in Acomal, Mexico. This is the first time we've ever been out of country, so this is a quite an experience for us. I'm just sitting here listening to all the wildlife and stuff. First thing this morning, it's just totally different. It's really awesome. I've always wanted to uh, make this trip. So, anyways, we're gonna we're gonna do a little vlogging. We're gonna take you guys along. Uh, we got some things going uh, on for tomorrow, and now we're waiting on a shuttle to get back over to the main uh, the lodge, and then uh, we're gonna take our first trip down to the ocean. And see what that's about um, you guys we've been to Florida several times but we've never been anywhere to no we've never been this way I've been to California but I've never been uh, any, anywhere out of the United States but anyways the kids are with us they're excited right mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Caleb's excited he just don't show it real well right mm -hmm. what's your favorite thing so far food. the food yeah that's another thing I, I I didn't video this morning, so first thing we got up and we went and uh, ate breakfast, and uh, the breakfast buffet. So we're, hold, let me back up. We are at Alcamal. We're at the Bahia Principe Principe of Alcamal or something like that. Bahia Principe Luxury Alcamal. Yeah. So we're on a resort. We're on a resort. We flew into Cancun. It's about an hour and a half drive south from there, and we're right on the ocean side. But uh, anyway, we woke up first thing this morning. This is an all-inclusive trip, so, you know, we've already paid for all the food and all that stuff. But we go in to eat breakfast, and we walk in, and it is this giant buffet. Biggest buffet I've ever seen. But the coolest thing is there's food from all over the place. Um, just seeing all the different people. There's a lot of people from Europe here, a lot of people from all over the globe. And just seeing other people from different regions of the uh, Earth, uh, how they make their food and stuff compared to the way we do it it's just it's just crazy it's awesome to see that but anyways we got to catch one of these shuttles and uh try to get down to the ocean it's, it's a little bit of a walk i guess we'll start walking and try to catch a shuttle but anyways hope you guys enjoy this video i know it's a little bit of a different video but i told you guys um i'd bring you along we're going to be gone for five ni nights and four days you guys know from the last video if you've seen it my dad is at home farm setting and taking care of all the animals all that good stuff so he's giving us reports back um, the only thing is weird if we're off Wi-Fi our cell does not work I think our texts work but uh, no no data so as long as we got Wi-Fi we'll be okay so I, uh, I kind of shot some videos and edited in advance because I knew we'd be gone for this long and uh, we'll still have videos posting by the time you see this we'll be back home but anyways thank you guys for watching hope you hopefully you enjoy and uh, we'll see what is coming up next Look, they got all kinds of wildlife here. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be walking on this grass, but it's like a some kind of iguana looking thing. It's a cool looking dude. We oh can't take that home, no, can't take it home. Oh, there's a, another coconut, Caleb. I better get out from this tree, it's gonna knock me out if it falls on me. There's Rachel and Caleb in the cart behind us. She's waving. Yeah, so we've got a new hat here. I'll be wearing this at home for sure. But tomorrow we're going on, um, the next two days we're going on some, uh, I guess, uh, excursions, adventures, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I needed something for some shade. I need something for mosquitoes too. Mosquitoes down here right now are really bad. Um, you guys know the hurricane just come in just a few days ago. That's why we didn't know if we were going to even be able to make this trip, but we made it. Uh, didn't do too much damage here. They got it cleaned up really quick. Uh, they didn't even lose power, I don't think. I got a mosquito in my hand right now, too. But anyways, it's really cool going around to all these shops and kind of negotiating the prices and stuff like that. 
Um, if you guys come down here, don't just settle for what they're asking. You can negotiate. I love the negotiation. Rachel kept giving me the eye and was like, you don't need anything else. I'm like, well, I just got a really good deal. I got them to come down like 2,000 pesos. And trying to learn the um, conversion rate between pesos and the American dollars, that's, that's been a learning curve for me. But thankfully, we all have smartphones now with these smart apps that does all the work for us. So you got to be careful when you're dealing with people that, you know, uh, there's a language barrier there a lot of times. And uh, you want to make sure you're on the same page with each other. But anyways, it's been a cool learning experience. We're waiting on a shuttle to get back to our resort because we're actually on another resort right now. And it's a pretty far walk. We got to get back and get packed because tomorrow the excursion we're going on is, uh, you guys probably seen it. It's one of the new seven wonders of the world. This has been a, um, I guess a goal of mine. I've always, and uh, we're, I'm, I'm really excited for that. I'm, uh, I really like history. You guys know I'm Cherokee, I'm Native American, but uh, I appreciate all history, um, learning all the different cultures and stuff. And then I'll share with you guys what we're doing the next day after that is going to be really cool too. We'll, we'll get more into that later, but right now, we gotta get out of here before we get carried off by these mosquitoes, so stay tuned. So even though we are in a different country, we are down here in Mexico, we always feel comfortable knowing we can rely on our real link camera system to View on our app, we can always look back at our house, at our farm. We can look at different parts of our farm or our other properties with our Wi-Fi or our cell SIM card cameras. Um, if you guys are interested in any of the Reolink security cameras, whether you need Wi-Fi version or the cellular SIM card versions, if you don't have Wi-Fi or electric, please click on the link in the description below because right now, Reolink is offering prime deals with prime security and uh, up to 48% off. So be sure to check out your very own system. And right here, I'm going to show you guys some of the different models they have and all the great discounts. Uh, just make sure you click on the link in the description. And here is a video of one of our Wi-Fi cameras. This will show my dad. He's at home right now taking care of our farm. You can see him walking by the camera, fixing to water and feed uh, Russell, Cora, and Leesky. So if you guys are interested in your very own real link camera, be sure to click on the link in the descriptions below. Okay, so we just walked into Chich Chichen Itza and uh, we're with our tour guide. So I'm gonna see how much we can actually film. Turn the camera around and show you guys some of this stuff. These people will use the construction of a camera. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Your here. <laughs> okay, again, my name is Salvador. You can call me Chava. Chava is my bad nickname. Okay? Chava means lady next to country. <laughs> During this tour, I will provide information of this temple behind me. The name is the Temple of Kukulkan and that one, which is the Mayan Bowl Field. Have you heard about that, the Mayan Bowl game? Yeah. yeah. Well, that is the biggest in all Mesoamerica. Okay, after this information, free time for you. So please allow me your attention the next time, the next hour, to provide information and then free time for you. Okay? Very good. Uh, this is the first time for everybody. Yep. Have you ever been in another place like this? I mean, sorry, into the Maya lands? <laughs> no? Okay, this is our country, Mexico. Can you tell me which area of this country are Maya lands? What we call Maya lands? Yucatan. Yucatan. What else? Very good. No. Southeast. We have states like Yucatan, Campeche, Quintana Roo, Chiapas, and Tabasco. That's in Mexico. Also Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. Like Chichen Itza, we have more than 3,000 Mayan cities. They were a huge civilization. Do you have an idea what is the modern language of these people? The modern language? Huh? Maya, very good. The Maya language has 28 dialects, like Quiche, Tojolabal, Otomi, Chontal, Tzotzil. The name of the place. Chichen Itza. Listen, the name has a sound. It is Chichen Itza. Okay, chi in Maya language means mouth. 
pay attention. I'm going to teach you a Mayan word. If somebody speaks too much at home and he can stop, repeat this. Makachi. Makachi. Makachi means shut up. <laughs> Good word. Okay? Now, the word chan. Do you know or have you ever been in a cenote? Yeah. Yes. This place has two cenotes. Okay? There is a little one in the south section. The south section was the place where it used to be the high class. The name of that little cenote is Ixtolok. Ixtolok means iguana. So Mayan used to drink water from that cenote. Now, if you walk straight in that direction behind that square construction, you will find a huge cenote, which is this. The name is the sacred, uh, sacred well. This one was for human sacrifices. Have you heard about that? I need some of you after human sacrifices. <laughs> this is the trail of life for this civilization. The name in Spanish is Seiba. The name in Maya language is Yaache. Yaash means uh, green color, che is tree or wood. Tree of the life. Well, at the Mayan cosmovision, these three represent the Mayan universe. 13 branches, 13 levels of the heaven with 13 gods. They used to call that place Ka'an. Ka'an in Maya language is like a heaven. The name of the trunk is Cap, and is where we are now, the land. Nine roots, nine levels of the underworld. The name of that, the name of that place was Shibalba, where they had nine gods. Now, Shibalba, it wasn't like a hell. They never had, Mayans, they never had an idea about that, okay? That was with the, the Spaniards, okay? Shibalba was a dark place with water, and it's the place where the light emerged. So according to these people, life starts from, from that place, okay? That's why for Mayans, cenotes or caves, they were like a doors to Shibalba. So in this case, this huge cenote, it, it was uh, considered like the, like the main door of Shibalba for this ceremonial place. This section was the ceremonial center of the city. It was a religious place where Mayans made a trade, where they used to worship their gods, and also where they made human sacrifices on top of those square constructions. Okay? That's why the word Chen in the name. Chen means that. It's another. What means Chi? Now, I, I have. Pay attention, I have a test for you. Okay, what? Chi is what? Mouth. Mouth, chen. Cenote. And Itza, that was the last royal family that used to live here on the Chinese. So the meaning of the name is at the mouth of the well of the royal family, Itza. They chose this peninsula of Yucatan thanks to those cenotes. We don't have rivers or lakes, only cenotes. Okay? This place is huge. Chichen Itza has like a 17 square miles around. So they were like the states. I am from a little town, the name is Piste. Behind our houses, I mean in my yard, we have hills. They are temples. So we have more we have more temples lost into the jungle. Mm -hmm. The good age of this place was from 900 to 1150 after Jesus. Before of this, all the Mayan civilization, they were influenced by the Toltecs. Have you heard the name? Toltecas? Yes. Toltecs. What about the Aztecs? Well, Mexico City, right? Near to that state, there is another state, the name is Tula Hidalgo, where used to be that people, the Toltecs. Toltecs, uh, they were like a warriors. Mm -hmm. They came here in the year 890 after Jesus, and they brought a god which named in Nahuatl language, pay attention, Nahuatl is different than Maya. The name of this god is Se Acatli Topitzil Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> One more time. Se Acatli Topitzil Quetzalcoatl. Repeat after me. Se Acatli. Se Acatli. Topitzil. Topitzil. Quetzal. Quetzal. Coatl. Coatl. Now you. 
This, this long name means the man eagle snake. Okay? So when they came here to the Maya lands, if you remember the language here is Maya, the name of this god becomes to Kukulkan. Kukulkan. Kukul means feathers. Kan is a snake. That is the name of that temple. The temple of Kukulkan. So we have the same person, but with different names. For example, if my name in Mexico is Juan, and I will go to Florida, they will call me John, right? Yes. Because there is English. So we talk about this God as a mythological God. There is no grave with his human remains. We talk about this God as a, as a, as a big guy, wide skin, with a long, like this person, with a long. <laughs> We have this carving inside of that place. For some archaeologists, this carving is that person. For some writers, this man was Mr. Eric the Red, a Viking from Norway. He was a shipwreck in the peninsula of Yucatan. In the Mormon religion, this man is Jesus. So we don't know who was that person. We talk about him as a myth, okay? According to the history, he came, this, he came with the Toltecs, and he brought the knowledge of a mad astronomy, and he shared the knowledge with these people, with the Mayans. That's why Mayans, they accept this person as a god. That was in the year 890 after Jesus. Around 926, Mayans and Toltecs together, they start to build that temple in honor of him. The reason was the high knowledge of that person. And that knowledge is still in that construction. Around the year 1250 after Jesus, big Mayan cities from this peninsula of Yucatan were abandoned. Mayans left their cities. They returned to Central America. So there we have cities older than this one. Okay? The question is why they moved. Before the Spanish, they had troubles like overpopulations, wars, fights with towns, droughts, mm -hmm. and they were farmers, diseases, uh -huh. and finally, the Spaniards. The conqueror. The conqueror of this peninsula of Yucatan was Mr. Francisco de Montejo. Look, this is a painting of that temple. It's the year 1842. Mr. Frederick Catterwood from London this man, he was a traveler. He found that temple like this in the year 1842. Mm -hmm. Then, in the year 1930, the Carnegie Institution from Washington, D.C., they sent archaeologists to explore this place and they restored the temple of Kukulkan and the others. Okay? Today, the temple only has like a 50 or 60 percent restored, it's not complete. This side is the west, the left is the north, which is the main door, behind is the east and south. The temple has 55 meters of base with 30 high. In the year 1988, Chichen Itza was named World Mayan Heritage. 2006, no more climbing, it's not allowed to climb. Somebody fell, somebody scratched their names, that's why it's not allowed today. 2007, one of the new seven wonders. Did you, did you know that? Thanks to that temple. Now, why? Why is very famous this place? Well, well uh, we know this thanks to this temple, but why? What it has? An idea? Knowledge. Knowledge, uh-huh. What else? Have you heard that? Yeah. The temple produced acoustic. This temple has things like mad, Astronomy, architecture, acoustic, equinox, solstice. But the main reason is that this temple represents the Mayan calendar. Have you heard about that? Okay. The temple has four faces, four sides. On each side, we have the stairs case with 91 steps. Please tell me. How many days we have today on each season? <laughs> 
91.43, something like that, okay? Well, if the temple has four phases with 91 steps, four seasons with equinox and solstice. Mm -hmm. And also, 91 per four, we have 364. But the last level where we have the chamber, that is considered the last step, making 365. What is that? Year. <coughs> This Mayan year is different than our calendar. The Mayan year has 19 months, not 12 like today. Mm -hmm. These people, the Mayans made another system which base was 20. They took 20 from the cycle of the moon. And also they used to count in everything with fingers and toes. Can you see that decoration at the top of the roof? There is something like a hook. Like that one, there used to be five on each side making 20 the base of the number system. Please tell me, how many levels you can see? Nine. Nine plus nine, 18. They represent 18 months of those 19. Now, 18 months of 20 days, 360. Plus one extra month, only five days, that they used to call in Maya language, Wayep. Wayep means like a bad luck. It was like a for ritual, for a human sacrifice. They used to represent those five days with five hooks from the top, making 365. Can you see this circle, the big one? It has 19 hieroglyphics, making the months. So this circle is that construction. So the circle represents that construction. The name is HAB, H-A-A-B. HAB means solar calendar, okay? The little one inside was a moon calendar. It has 260 days. With the moon and the solar, these people made this. We call this the Long Mayan count. It has 5,200 years. Have you heard about that? I'm sure you know. The date zero of these people was 13th of August, 3,114 before Jesus. Every 52 years, Mayans made renovation. Every 52 years, they used to renew. Uh, they used to renew their buildings. They used to add new buildings over old buildings every 52 years. Please tell me, when was the end of the last Mayan cycle? 2012. What happened in that year? The calendar ended. But people were talking about the end of the world. Mayans, they never predict the end of the world. It was the end of the last Mayan cycle. The name of this cycle was 13 Baktum. Now, if you pay attention, on each level, there is something like a deep panels, like a box of one, two, three. Can you see? Yes. Three, 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 three. The last, the last level, nine level, only has two, right? Okay, three per eight, 24 plus two, 26, and 26 in the other side, 52. The cycle of these people. Wow. Now for us, 52 weeks in a year. So this is the most accurate calendar. The Mayan calendar has a mistake of a second. Our calendar has a mistake of hours. We call this leap here, okay? This is inside of that temple. There is another temple inside. That little temple on top has another chamber, that one, with two rooms where we have this chagmal and jaguar the chagmal is, is like a person he's holding a dish okay where maya used to put human offerings human hearts that was the offering to the sun god as the egyptians they used to call ra in this case maya used to call kinicha how the other is a jaguar it has red color and 73 pieces of jade there in the back used to be another dish of jade where Maya used to burn a sap of a tree. The name is Copal. They used that as an incense. That was the way to clean the human offering. Well, they were connections. They were like a messengers. Do you remember this? Can you remind me what is this? No, it's, it's easy. You can read. Okay, in how many parts is divided this universe? No, not levels, how many parts? 
Khan, Kat, Shibalba. Three, okay? 13 levels and nine levels, okay? Chagmo, he was like a connection from the land, from Cap to Khan. And the jaguar, as a nocturnal animal, he was considered the other connection to the underworld. So they need to worship 13 gods up and nine down, and they were connections to those levels, okay? Have you ever seen this, this type of a bird? The name is Quetzal. Quetzal belongs to Chiapas and Guatemala. For Mayans, Quetzal was a holy bird. The reason was a long tail with beautiful feathers and color. When this Quetzal is flying, the tail looks like the shape of a snake. That's why Mayans relate this with their god Quetzalcoatl. Uh -huh. That acoustic is the sound of that Quetzal. I will show you in a couple of minutes. Now, here comes the best part of this temple. This temple has a perfectly square base, and the corners are not aligned to the cardinal points, north, south, east. The base is off a little bit. The base has 17 degrees to the magnetic north, not the true north. They try to reach those 23.5 degrees that we have on the axis of the planet. And guess what? Thanks to that inclination, we have four seasons, and they knew that. So Mayans, they were great astronomers. Into the peninsula of Yucatan map, geographically we're in the middle of this state, and we are under of the line Tropic of Cancer. That's why our weather always is hot. So we don't have four seasons. This weather is hot, super hot, and rainy. That's it. <laughs> well, these astronomical things and that construction on top make the equinox. Please pay attention to that chamber. Look at the chamber. As you can see, the whole chamber is not symmetric to the stairs. I mean, it's not in the center. You got it? It's up, right? To which side? South. South. Okay. What happened? Every 21st of March, 21st of September, 4 o'clock, 4.50 p.m., when the sun is going to the sunset, Thanks to the offset of the chamber, the sunlight, we try a shot of those corners one by one from the top to the bottom, making this, my friends. Pay attention to this picture. Can you see the shadow? Yeah, thank you. Is the body of the snake? It happened twice in a year, March and September. In the base of the north side, there's a huge snake head, making the body of Kukulkan or Quetzalcoatl, crazy. Now for farmers, this shadow represents fertility, fertility, uh, renovation, life. So when the, farmers, when the farmers saw the first equinox march, they knew it's time to plant in. This is the field march, they clean it around the field and then they burned the field. Ash works as fertilizer. April, they started to plant in the maize. May is the beginning of the rain season. And three months after May with the other equinox, September, that was the harvest. So that equinox was another calendar, was a farm calendar. Now, thanks to all those things like math, astronomy, architecture, acoustic, equinox, solstice, calendar, well, that's why today Chichen Itza is one of the new seven wonders. With other sites like Rome, Taj Mahal, Great Wall, Petra Samples, Machu Picchu, and Brazil. Mm -hmm. Now, you really know why today this place is very famous and also one of the new seven wonders, is thanks to that temple. So friends, this is more than a construction. It's more than a temple. It's unique. In a few words, without this temple, we are lost. Believe me. Chichen Itza is the bank of our government. We have more than 13,000 people per day. So this place, Chichen Itza and Teotihuacan, are very famous in our country, okay? Let's move in front. Let me show you that acoustic, please. If you have a cell phone, be ready with your cell phone in case if you want to do a video of that acoustic, because in my case, I don't use my hands like everybody to clap, for clap. I have a trick for you. Please come. Okay. 
Okay, are you ready with your cell phone? Okay, one, two, three, listen. Got it? Wow. Thank you. Our peninsula of Yucatan is the rock is limestone. Limestone is semi hollow. That's why when somebody claps, can you try, sir? That's why when he claps or when I do this, the sound goes through these stones as vibrations. And it comes back from the top as the Quetzal sound. Now, we don't know what was the use of that acoustic. But I think maybe this acoustic was something like a microphone to the priest. Because this section was the ceremonial center of this place. And this is the main construction. So let's imagine somebody on top, like a priest, speaking, and everybody can hear the voice of my Maybe that was the use for me. Okay, make sense? Yes. Okay. Friends, uh, when we finish this tour, if you want to take a nice picture with this temple, please return to that corner. There is a good angle for a nice picture. I recommend it. Okay? Let's go to the Mayan Ball Field. Computer, we suppose that the temple of Kukulkan used to be like this. Red color. For Mayans, red color represents life and power. And they took the red from paprika. Okay? That one is the temple of the thousand columns. Can you see the columns? That one used to be like this, look. Also, we call the palace of the warriors. Some of the columns there, some of the columns has carvings of a warriors and also people like a traders. It was a trade temple, like a market, okay? Inside of that temple, we have this painting in a wall. Look. This is original, still inside. You can see slaves and people making trade by land and by sea. Mm -hmm. Still inside of that temple. But in colors as well. Yes, 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 like this. Yes. Would you like to see some of the red and the blue? Original? Yeah. Come. <laughs> Sorry, uh, by the way, that uh, little bricks of limestone, this is original. At the Mayan time, all this ground used to be with limestone as a floor. And over the limestone, a stucco, plaster. Up there, you can see some of the red. Yeah. And there is blue into the black, a little bit above of the red. Can you see a little blue? Yes. yes. Now, can you recognize what animal is inside of that carving? Jaguar. Uh-huh. That is the name of that temple, the temple of the jaguars. So that temple was something like a box seat for that family, royal family. What was, the, what was the name? It's size. It's size. <laughs> so they used to be there watching a ceremony in that place. So this is the ball field, the biggest in all Mesoamerica. Where, where is it? Why they not angry like Cobra? Why? Maybe because this is the number one. Yeah, the others. Only this state, Yucatan, has more than thousand fields, but this one is the number one. Cobadre Ram. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, this place is huge. Sometimes people relate this place with that famous movie. From <laughs> Quidditch. Quidditch. Harry Potter. <laughs> Okay, look at this picture. Is it the same place? Is the year 1930? This is how archaeologists found this place, abandoned. Okay. And this other picture, you can see more. You can see more limestone as we saw in the entrance. We call this place Ball Field. I think it's a wrong name because they never used this as a sport. That was a ceremony and was for agriculture to get a good soil, good harvest, good rain season. And this family, it says, they used to share this with other towns. So people from Ekbalan, Mayapan, Uxmal, they used to come here for agriculture. On top used to be the royal family. 
there used to be the guest, maybe upper class in other cities. In the other temple, the priest, the man in charge of the city, he was a priest. The field, there used to be two groups, like that people, one group, one team or group with seven people and another in the other side. One of the team, like the leader, he used to be on that platform under the ring waiting for a rubber ball, synthetic ball. And he needed to pass the ball through the hole. They used to hit the ball with shoulders, elbows, hips, and knees. They can't touch the ball with hands, feet, or head. So that was very difficult. And the problem, the problem was that they were short people. Look, like this. <laughs> like a 150 or 160. Four feet. Okay. But we have a carving where you will see players holding something like a racket, bats, and also they have body protection. So they use something like a tools. Now, we don't, we don't know how often Mayas made this. We don't know the rules. Why we, why we don't have much information about this? Spaniards, they destroyed everything. They burned the books, okay? Mr. Roman Piña Chan, he was a Mexican archaeologist, and according to this person, at the Mayan time, the ground used to be with limestone and stucco. And according to this person, during that ceremony, the floor represents the heaven. Each ring has carvings where you will see intertwined snakes. The Maya used to call those snakes connection of the life. Tell me, please tell me. What can you understand about that word, connection of the life? What is for you? How many babies do you have? Three? Because you have three connections. What is that connection? During the pregnancy, there is connection, umbilical cord. How is the shape? Now, curiously, today we can see that same shape in the DNA, double helix. If you go to the hospital, also you will see the similar, the hell stick with the snakes. According to this man, rings represent the place where we live because it talks about the life. Now, that thing that he uses a bowl, it wasn't a bowl. That circular shape was the representation of the sun. And remember, the sun is a god for them. Well, in conclusion, floor is the heaven. That people used to be there as constellations. The ring is our place and the ball is sun. Okay, if we record a video of a sunrise and a sunset and we speed up the video, we're gonna see this, right? So Mayans, they try to imitate the movement of the sun, making duality between sunrise, sunset, life or death. If the ball crossed the ring, no matter which ring, they used to believe that the sun is making fertility. It's time to plant it. Remember, it was for agriculture, okay? Today we know that thanks to the sunlight, we have photosynthesis, make sense? So at one point, the ceremony over, and then they had a ritual where some of the leaders will be sacrificed. Some of them lost the head. Now, here comes the big question, who of them? Because we don't know if was the loser or the winner. What do you think? Why the winner? Have you agree with me? Yes? Okay, I am agree with you. <laughs> I have a reason. There is a, there is a original Mayan book the name is Popol Vuh. This book was something like a Bible for them. According to this book, the first man, he was created from the corn, maize. People came from the maize. That's why they had respect to the land. Mr. Roman, he said, maybe Mayas made that ceremony four times in a year. Why four times? Seasons. So when these people made the planting, after the planting, with that ceremony, they asked it to their gods, good land, virtually and a good rain season, right? Well, my question was, what thing they need to give to their gods as a change? From who? 
my answer was the best. Okay? If you ask to your gods for the good things, give them back good things. Now, the death is not the end of the life. There is life after death, according to them. Uh -huh. And also, they had a different idea between death and the human sacrifice. Okay, tell me, where we are now? Which is our place? The trunk, cap. Okay, according to these people, when somebody dies, his soul has to go down first. He has a mandatory process. And he need to cross nine chambers of that place. Chambers of fire, jaguars, darkness, blood, to reach the heaven. He can return to this place through the trunk, but not as a person. Could be a tree, plant, animal, or an insect. So this idea is reincarnation. It happened in case of a death. Now tell me, what happened in case, in, in case of a human sacrifice? <laughs> Very good. So you're going to skip this and you will go directly. Your name? Richard. Richard. Yeah. For example, Mr. Richard, he's from Ekbalam. Ekbalam is another Mayan city more to the east. And Richard, he's the best player of that city. He came here and he won. All the good things that he won, harvest, food, rain season, want to be for his town. So he will be like a hero or a god for that city. So his blood is like a new life. It's like a fertility. Okay? And he went directly with your gods. Okay? That's why, according to some archaeologists, people from other cities came here with intention to win, to get the honor of the human sacrifice. What well, was like a privilege for them. Okay? Are you ready to play now? Or you want to play? Yeah. Now? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you have a baby. You can wait. Okay, let's see the carving, please. Please come. Okay, everybody can see the ring. Can you see the carving of the snakes? Okay. Can you can you can you let me know? Look. <laughs> this is a player with a big headdress, long feathers, earrings, person, chest protection, belt. From his belt, there's like a bat. He's holding a racket. The racket has the shape of the snake. Knee protection and, pay attention, Nike shoes. <laughs> <laughs> this is one, two. There is something funny here. Look at the fingers of this hand. Some of them are like this, like this, like this. What is that? Richard, do you have a sport that you like it? Yes, football. How do you feel if your team win the cup? Chuffed. What are you going to do? Celebrate. Maybe you're going to jump? So this is a type of expression, emotion. So this team are going to the center of this carving where we have the human sacrifice and they look happy. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Please, let's move. Please come. Let's pay attention to this. You see? This man is holding a dagger in the right hand. You got it? Yeah. In the other hand, is holding a head. You can see eyes, mouth, neck, and the blood. Oh, yeah. His body is here. Arms, one, two, and the legs. How is, he, how is his position? Kneeling. Kneeling. Knee. This position is a reverence. So he's giving the life by himself. Means honor. His blood. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of blood. Why seven? Seven players. Players, very good. Only one lost, the head. And the blood becomes by a snake. Why the snake? In the twine of life. Very good. If you remember the equinox, the shadow for farmers is fertility. And the topic here is agriculture. That's why this snake is going and becomes by plants where you can see flowers and fruits growing. So his blood is making new life. This is the bowl inside we have a skull. 
that is Hall is the representation of the dead god. Her name is Apuch, and she lives into the underworld, but is face into this person, and she has a long tongue. We call this tongue virgula or voluta. It means text, words, like speaking. She's asking the body of this person as a human offering to the underworld. And then the other team. Thank you, ladies. The traveler Eric Thompson, he said, we still hear voices of a ball players in the ball field of Chichen Itza. Can you believe that? Let's pay attention to that wall. I'm going to do a noise again with my tongue. If it's possible, try to count. Try to count how many times you're going to hear the sound of this. Listen. <coughs> seven times. That's why this man relate echoes with voices. <laughs> Amazing. Echoes acoustics are thanks to the limestone. Limestone helps with this. Now pay attention to that wall. From the ring to the right side, the wall has big blocks. In the other side, we have smalls, right? Smalls and bigs, right? Now look this one and tell me how is this? Opposite. It's a mistake. The wall is going to help to the other acoustic that we have from the North Temple to the South Temple. Let's go to that corner in the shade, five minutes more, and we uh, we need to do a... Okay, let's see. Tell me, who person used to be there? The priest. The priest. The other side. The guest. The, guest. the top. Royal family. My name, if you have a complaint. My name. Chaba. That's my nickname. Salvador. Salvador. Now my nickname. Chava, the meaning? Congratulations, that was the test. As I can see, you're the best. Because you're the best. Okay. According to some archaeologists, that person, the priest, could be there speaking with normal level of the voice with the guest. From here to there. And also they with him. Please hold it. Pay attention, do a video if you want. Stay here. I thought this one is here. I can't film on it. Hola! Hola! That roof. How is the shape? How is? Curved. Like this. Look. And also this one. Each wall has a lift return to the shape. Each wall, each wall has a little inclination to the field between three or five degrees, making something like a microphone again. Mm -hmm. The people, the town, they watch it, that ceremony from the top, standing. Behind of each wall, we have a stairs case. Little construction on top, there used to be a three and here too. That was the place where used to be men in charge of the rules. Somebody like a referee. Or maybe they were like a solar's marks as a wow. clock for the time of that ceremony, okay? Wow. Well, my friends, my work ends here. Thank you so much for your time, for your attention. I hope the information was clear for you. Okay, now we are at the cenotes. We are going to be swimming down there. Don't drop the phone.
Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Science says take a shower before swimming. So we got our life jackets on, but you're supposed to take a shower before you swim. Here we go. Oh, that's cold. Okay, that's cold. <laughs> All right, let's go. You have to. Thank you. Keeps coming loose.
Yep. There goes mom. There's Rachel. All right. So we all did it. I don't know. Can you see the bottom? Some of our heads are steaming. Look at Caleb's head, it's steaming. That's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so uh, this is our first cenote. First time ever seeing this, and this is just right down the road from Chichen Itza. So this is an awesome experience. Very cool. Okay, next day now we are on the site Koba and we're taking the guided tour on that. Okay, familia, on Koba's side we have five, five uh, plazas, but just today we have the opportunity to visit four of them, okay? The plazas, they don't follow a timeline. I mean, maybe in the five plus, I mean, in the last one that today we have the opportunity to visit it, maybe the, that building was the first one in compared with the third or the, or the fourth one, okay? I mean, they don't follow a time. Okay, just a small group of people, they live in a palapa, just moving around here. But suddenly, somebody wants to be in charge of the place, and he decided to conform a union. And why not? This amazing place. The name of this construction is church, and it's not because they use it as a church. Basically, the archaeologists and the anthropologists they found offerings in honor to the gods. The offerings it could be flowers, feathers, wood, beautiful stones such as jade, turquoise, onyx, malachite, and here in this part of the circle we have the opportunity to put here the first construction of all squirrels. But actually it's the Mayan, right? This is just a small rock, okay? They love to carve in all these uh, rocks and transmit. Actually, when they build temples and buildings, they try to represent the three levels of the universe Maya. If we look up, I will check the top of the building for them represented that they are close to Earth. Mayan area that are completely different. And some of them just set a, a foundation and that's it because the purpose of this wall is at the end somebody offered the block. But it doesn't matter if there are big or small places, just they need to have two sections, okay? Such as this one, a big hole or a channel in the middle. And well, in a few ones, such as this one, we have the hoop. But it's not mandatory to use it. Why? Because not in all the volcanoes we have the hoop. And glass. This is a volcanic glass. That's why the people that came from the south, Guatemala or Central Highlands, Mexico City, brown. The Mayans, I said, use it as an astronomical tool. If you take off your sunglasses and try to look the sun, it's complicated, right? That's why they need to use it, and you can use it this one. And uh, was well, so perfect to see it. The sun. Sorry, you want to use it? Thank you. Familia, next one. Come on, buddy. You need to stand there and look up. And uh, well, the rest of the group, you see the shadow of the food? Where's the market? Actually, I said while well, the sun moves, and then look at the shadow of the food. And well, and look, familia, with one eye. today is Irish. Uh, July 12th was the first day of the new year of the Mayans. We don't celebrate on December, okay? Yes, 
finally have people stop climbing on it. Probably a good choice. Yeah, because some of the steps that are really slippery, mm -hmm. and if it kill me more in any rock, was really, really dangerous for some people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over here, they have a run 20 kit. And there's a hundred square meter. Then if people back in the middle of the jungle, they need some education. In Mexico, oh. uh, we speak, uh, uh, we have around 68 languages. Nahuatl is a language from the Aztecs. Around 10 million speak Nahuatl. And around 12 million speak Maya. Okay, Maya is a living language. Okay, and all of them are descended from the Maya. Okay, so today here, my friends, we will learn how to make tortillas. Uh, I hear you want to be Mexicans. So you have to learn how to make tortillas. So guys, please approach. You can take photos, videos all the time, guys, okay? Oh. Thank you. Mari. Our friend Mari will teach us how to make tortillas. Okay, guys, let me give you some instructions. Uh, some information about maize. The first man in America and maize, corn. Let me call it maize, please. So maize is, uh, and, and the first maize in America, they rise together. Without the uh, man intervention, we cannot have corn. Okay, and this is something about the characteristics about the corn. So the Maya uh, civilization, and before the Mayas, 3,000 years before that, they worked with this kind of plant. In the, at the beginning, it used to be a bush, but they start making mixes of the best plants, and that is how we know it today, the corn, the big corn that, that we have, guys. In, uh, every, uh, in Mexico, this is true, thousands of poor families, uh, they eat every day just tortillas and beans. This is the meal that they can afford. Also, it's, it's a surprise. In Mexico, uh, in all Mexico, in every neighborhood, you can find a tortilla machine. They can make around 100 tortillas per minute because we love brand and for new tortillas. And there is a Maya's book. The name is the Popol Vuh. And the Popol Vuh says the origin of the universe. It's our genesis, the, the genesis for the Mayas. And says all the humankind has been made with corn. Yeah? So Mexicans, we have a long tradition eating corn. A long, long tradition. For you, maybe a wheat is the most important thing that you can survive making bread in hard times. For Mexican, it's basic food. I, myself, I can eat uh, just six tortillas. I used to buy one and a half a kilo every two days for the whole family. Guys. Okay, and that is why we call it. We are the race of the maize, the, the the Cooper race. Okay, my friends. Now we are going to take some tortillas from our friend Mari. The same tortillas that we are going to eat in our meal. Please, you can hold the tortilla. Yes, yes. Grab it, please. Get it? Behind you there, guys, there yes, is a yes. delicious sauce. Yeah. That's called chicle pack. Anything you put inside a tortilla make a taco, okay? I can have a shoe taco if I put a tennis shoe inside. So, guys, this, this sauce has been made with pumpkin seed, smash it, uh, and tomato, and salt. That is all the ingredients. Take care with the sauce. Yeah, the sauce near my friends <laughs> is a uh, yeah. like yeah. sauce. Habanero. It's really hot. Yeah. Habanero. <laughs> Just wrong. No, no, no. It's not picking. Habanero. On one side. If you are hot, you can go to the same hotel, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good evening. That is Malokin. 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 
and she answered Malo King, like you. Malo means good and King means son. She was us a good son. Not today, okay? But well, <laughs> maybe later on. Okay, guys, we are going to drink some hibiscus tea. In every Mexican table, we rise with hibiscus tea. It's a traditional, traditional beverage. This is a flower that we boil it and we get a concentrate. Then we add uh, three quarters of water, a lot of sugar, and that's is how. Sorry, sir. And this is how we get this hibiscus tea so delicious. Uh -huh. This is a welcome drink. Please don't drink all because I want to uh, cheer with you guys, okay? You can drink it, but not all. Not all. Sorry. So don't be trying to catch the turtles or nothing. They're everywhere. You can jump in or no? We don't need a lot of No. It's a fish. Yes. Yeah, it's super cold. That is cold. Oh, it's cold. Oh my, that's, that's cold as the creek. Oh. Yeah, because it's coming out of a cave. Cool. Big difference from being in the sauna. <laughs> wow, this is cool. You just gotta go, it's too cold to sit there and wait. Kaya, don't you This is awesome. Oh, they're so clear. Kaya. It feels great. So this is this is cold. It feels just like the creek back home for sure. But this is a awesome experience. Okay, guys. So on part of this excursion, we are attending a Mayan um, cultural ceremony, and we just went through a spiritual thing with one of their uh, priests or shamans. Um, it was uh, really cool and experience to see this. And one thing cool about the Mayan, you guys know we're Cherokee. Um, Cherokees pride their stuff on their pride themselves on their culture and such and uh, one thing that the Cherokee Nation is trying to do now is preserve their language um, you guys know way before uh, Mexico was Mexico uh, the Spaniards came over and uh, conquered Mexico and that's where they got the Spanish language well before that the Aztecs and Mayans pretty much ruled the land and they had their own language well the Mayans are one tribe similar to Cherokees but down here in Mexico that is trying to preserve their native language the Mayan language and uh, they this family here that owns this um, I don't know what to call this but this place right here that we just attended the uh, culture cultural ceremony um, anyways they uh, they still speak the Mayan language so we got to learn some of that and kind of speak some of that so uh, it was a really cool experience. So anyways, we just swim in the cenote. I took the GoPro again. The cenotes are very beautiful, um, natural holes in the ground. You can read up about them. It's a whole scientific explanation on how they were formed and everything else. But anyways, now we're going to go eat some kind of um, dinner here in the restaurant. But I just wanted to bring you guys along. I couldn't bring any um, electronic devices. We even had to take off our watches to attend the uh, ceremony. But uh, it was a learning experience for sure. 
very cool so i couldn't bring a camera couldn't even bring a phone watch nothing so anyways hope you guys are enjoying this video so this is where we held the ceremony right here um like i said it was a uh mayan cultural ceremony it was really cool to be part of it but anyways i couldn't really record much of this and this is the hut that we got in and uh, it was pretty much like a like a sauna there's a fire pit in the middle and uh we all gathered around and they put hot rocks from the fire in the middle and there's some kind of grass and i don't know what all is in there and they blessed um did some prayers and stuff it was a, a whole mayan thing um like i said it was in the mayan language so it was a, a really cool learning experience um kaya and rachel and caleb we all started in there but uh Rachel and Kaya had to get out because they couldn't quite breathe. Whenever he poured the water on there and started um, doing the, the grass and like, I think it's like cedar. I don't know what all it is, but it was very aromatic, I guess. And you, it felt like you couldn't breathe. So they, they had to exit. They had to clap their hands twice. There was a whole thing to it. But anyways. I tapped out first. She tapped out, out first. Out of the whole entire group, but I'm not But ashamed. then we had to start all over. And this is like a 30 minute 45 minute deal we had to start all over we're about halfway through it and they they wanted out but she, they weren't the only one other people left and we started over again and then more people wanted out so uh not everybody finished but uh it was cool we got to um kind of make a wish and um you can't wish for anything for yourself you have to make a wish for someone else or other people and uh they you know they pray over I think it's a piece of sap they give you and then we do a ceremony deal where we walk around this fire a couple times and you throw that um sap rock or whatever into the fire and um anyways you gotta be here to see it all this is so much to uh take in and try to explain really, it was really cool before that we all gathered in a circle did you tell them that yeah oh okay yep. and the but, shaman blue smoke yes blue smoke on everybody and said a prayer over everyone prayed to the north east south and west and the heavens and the and the, and the ground, the ground. So, mother nature uh, yeah mother nature yeah. anyways it was a neat experience yeah there's not much left of the fire either there was a big fire going but anyways we gotta go get back on the bus so we can get back to the resort just wanted to show you guys how cool this experience was Gracias. Gracias. Mango and coconut. Churros. Mm -hmm. chocolate. It's like Nutella. Yeah. Okay. Let me see it. Okay, we finally got on a shuttle just in time, and uh, now Rachel's getting chased off by mosquitoes. There's a, another shuttle. Tight, tight, tight quarters here. Another one, look. Yeah, they're they're really bad down here. Yep. So, anyways. Yeah, the, it's actually, to me, down here, it actually feels cooler than Oklahoma to me. Hey there. Hey there. What are you? They bite. I don't know what they are. There's a baby one over there. See it? Oh, there's a baby one right there. He's like, hey, mystery, you got any food? No, it might bite you. Yeah, there was one right here. Alright. 